Hey y'all, welcome back to At Home with Chef Jolie. Today, we're gonna make a pear vodka spritzer, and we're gonna sip on that with some blackened salmon, dirty rice with a spicy Creole sauce. So let's get started. Let's talk about vodka spritzers. So typically, I think when people think about a vodka spritzer, they think summertime. However, just by changing a couple of ingredients, you can make it perfect for cooler temperatures. So I have about two, two and a half ounces of vodka, and then I'm going to add some pear nectar. Pear is a fall fruit, so if you didn't know that, now you know. So, pear nectar, and I'm gonna do about three ounces of pear nectar, and simple syrup, just to give it a little bit of sweetness as well. Here we go. Then I'm gonna shake it up, serve it over ice, and for the garnish, we have some really, we have some herbaceous rosemary. I don't know if you like rosemary, if you had rosemary, it has this very strong, earthy, um, herbaceous fragrance. And you can't really, you can't really taste it um, in the cocktail, but you can just smell it. You know how sometimes you can smell something so strong you almost feel like you get the essence of the flavor? So that is what the rosemary does for this cocktail. And the spritzer part is a little bit of club soda. So you can use, uh, this is actually tonic. You can use club soda, you can use tonic, you can use uh, sparkling water, and if you want to be real fancy, you can use some Prosecco or sparkling wine. So I'm gonna top it off right there with a little bit of tonic, just to get those little bubbles going. And then I'm gonna garnish it with a few sprigs of rosemary. Very refreshing, yet still reminds me of the fall with that pear, and I can smell the rosemary. This is gonna be the perfect cocktail to enjoy with our blackened salmon and the dirty rice. It's so easy to drink and sip on. So let's go cook some dinner. It is time to make this blackened salmon. I feel like salmon is one of those types of fish where even if you don't really like fish, you'll like salmon because it has a very mild flavor. So we have here, I'm rubbing this salmon because I love cutting salmon. It relaxes me, but anyway, back to what I was telling y'all. So we have this side of salmon here, it's a whole filet. It is skinless, so you can pick this up at the seafood department in the grocery store. But we're gonna trim it down. This side here is the belly or the stomach of the salmon. So I'm gonna trim that part down and then I'm gonna trim a little bit of the tail and I'm gonna trim a little bit right here of this part just so that we can make some nice even fillets. So let me get started. Really, this really relaxes me. Like doesn't that look relaxing? Look at that. So I'm gonna take that part off, see how clean that is and don't throw this away. Okay, you can use this, the parts that I'm trimming off, use that to make a grilled salmon Caesar salad or whatever you want, don't throw it away. And I'm just gonna cut just a little piece of the top here so I can have a straight edge there. And I'm gonna pull her up. What should we name her? I feel like this salmon should have a name. I don't know, comment down below and tell me what her name should be. All right, and I'm just gonna trim just a little bit on this side, because it has that uneven part there. I'm just kinda a little bit anal when it comes to making it all even. So that looks pretty good to me. Take that little piece off right there. Okay, and see how this salmon is nice and thick there? That is gonna make a moist, beautiful piece of blackened salmon. So now I'm just gonna cut 
a few pieces here and these are probably about I say about five ounces or so nice size portion just like that and there we go so I'm just gonna work with a couple of pieces and put these over to the side let me wash my hands really quickly okay and I don't have my towel I need a towel so maybe a uh, Keith creative behind the camera over here can hand me a towel so I can dry my hands there we go you like that don't you TV magic YouTube magic okay we're gonna make a easy salmon blackened seasoning rub so did you guess what it was gonna start with I mean why would we start with anything else it's gonna start with a dab of douya because that's the base of the flavor so I'm gonna put a generous amount of a dab of douya then I have a little bit of oregano just a little bit about that much you know the recipe is gonna be down in the description box so you can go there to get all the exact measurements a little bit of dry thyme and then smoked paprika and let me tell y'all something about blackening food, blackening chicken, shrimp, salmon. Blackening does not mean burnt, okay? Does not mean burnt. So you don't want to blacken it to death. And I'm gonna show you when it's time to go over to the stove how we achieve a perfect blackened crust without drying out the salmon. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this smoked paprika because that helps with that, giving that rich, deep color. Here we go. I think that's good. I want a little bit more red. That's why I wore red today because I knew that we were gonna be playing around with this smoked paprika. I think that's perfect. And smoked pap paprika does have a little bit of a uh, kind of smoky, flavor however it's not salty so the only uh, salt content you have is from the adabaduya there's no salt in the thyme or the oregano or the paprika so you don't have to worry about sodium okay so we've talked before you know I always hit my proteins with a little bit of oil I have a little bit of vegetable oil here and I'm only going to add the seasoning the blackened seasoning to one side and I'm gonna give it a generous amount because I'm only adding it to one side you're not gonna need it on both sides and the spicy Creole sauce that we have that goes on top it has a nice amount of flavor and a little bit of heat so it's all gonna work and play together really really well one thing here's a tip y'all if you didn't know Whenever you are cutting fish, chicken, raw meat, you gotta switch cutting boards. Don't y'all use the same cutting board that you cut your fruits and vegetables and things like that on and put raw meat on it or raw fish. So I have a, a cutting board for fish, I have one for red meat, I have one for chicken, just to keep everything nice and sanitary. Okay, this is what the salmon looks like. And then we're gonna go over to the stove. I got my cast iron skillet heating up. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, vegetable oil and some butter, and we're gonna make it do what it do. The salmon is gonna give what it's supposed to give. Let's go. When you're blackening salmon, I suggest a hot, hot, hot cast iron skillet. And that's what we got right here, a hot cast iron skillet. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit less of um, vegetable oil. And be careful not to put a ton of oil in here because you don't want to, we're not frying, we're blackening, which is, which is different. When you fry, you use a lot more oil, okay? There we go. And remember I said blackening is not burning. So I have a little trick where I blacken the, the part that has the seasoning on it in the cast iron skillet. 
and then I finish it in the oven. And doing that allows it to not burn on the bottom. And that's what you don't want, okay? So a little bit of butter, pat of butter next to each part, or next to each piece of salmon, I should say. And that's gonna help, that, that butter is going to help with the blackening process because butter, I, butter browns much quicker than vegetable oil. And so that is gonna help us get that nice, nice crust. So I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And then once I get the crust on here, I'm gonna flip these over and I'm gonna go in the oven. And what I have to help me too is I have a thermometer. So you can get this at the grocery store, I mean, Walmart, wherever. And salmon is done at, depends on how you like your salmon. I like my salmon just a teeny bit pink in the middle. So about 135, 140. Just insert it in, in the middle, and when it comes to 135, 140, you can bring it out, or even at 130, because it's gonna carry over. If you've heard of carryover cooking, that just means that once you take something out of the oven or off the stove, it continues to cook a little bit. So keep that in mind. So let's check on this, and let's see what our crust is looking like. You know what, it's, the thing about blackening is that you don't wanna move the salmon too quick. So you gotta have a little bit of patience. Don't peek, I'd say probably about, maybe a minute to a minute and a half for salmon that's about, this salmon is, looks like it's about three inches thick. That's about enough time, so let's check. That looks good. So you notice, I'm gonna just put it right back here. I don't wanna turn it over yet because if I flip it over before I'm ready to put it in the oven, it's gonna keep cooking. And we don't want that to happen because we don't wanna dry it out. There we go. That one can stand to get a little bit darker. I think that's good. Okay, that's it. We're gonna get ready to put it in the oven and we'll be ready to have some blackened salmon with the dirty rice. So let's make the dirty rice while the salmon is in the oven and we will be ready to enjoy this blackened salmon with dirty rice and spicy Creole sauce. It is time to make my dirty rice. I'm calling it my dirty rice because it's a, a little bit, I don't want to say non-traditional because I don't want y'all to think it's not going to give you what dirty rice gives you, but let me just do it. Okay, so, um, Y'all know, you've heard me say I don't eat pork. So instead of pork sausage, I have turkey sausage. And it's just as good, just go with it. Go with it, it's better for you too. So a little bit of oil. Then I have, um, let me grab a spoon here. And I add the ground turkey sausage. And we're gonna let it brown. While it's browning, in just a couple minutes, I'm gonna add in my bell peppers and onions so they can get nice and soft. Um, typically, why they call dirty rice dirty rice, I don't know if you know why they call dirty rice dirty rice, or what gives it the dirty color, it is chicken livers. And I know a lot of people don't like chicken liver. I actually like it in dirty rice. However, I know that some people don't. So I have a trick for you to show you how to get the dirty rice dirty without the chicken liver. You're gonna have all the flavor. You're gonna have a little bit of heat. You're gonna have everything that dirty rice is supposed to give is going to be given in my dirty rice. And it's easy to make, so easy. At this point, I'm gonna add in a little bit of chopped yellow onion. And I'm adding it with the sausage right now and the bell pepper too, because as the sausage is cooking, whatever fat that is in the sausage is rendering or coming out or releasing from the sausage. And all that flavor is going to season up the onions and peppers. So you just wanna brown this just like you would ground beef or sausage. And 
I have my cooked rice right here. It's about six cups of cooked rice. And then once the onions and peppers get nice and soft and the sausage is all nice and brown, we're gonna just mix it together, season it up, and add a little bit of heat. We might add a, just a teensy bit of butter just to give it some richness. And then my trick, my tip, my hack, I'm gonna show you what I do to get that kind of brown color that you get with traditional dirty rice. It's gonna pair so good with this salmon. Wait till mouth is already starting to water. Y'all know how I do. It's gonna pair so good with the blackened salmon that we just made a few minutes ago. So now that our sausage is nice and brown and our bell, pepper, bell peppers and onions are nice and soft, it is the perfect time to add in our steamed rice. So I'm just gonna add it in. There we go. Just like that, and I'm just folding in the sausage and the veggies, that looks good. Okay, I wanna incorporate the sausage and the bell peppers and the onions evenly before I start to season, just to make sure that I have enough rice or the amount of rice that I want. And I think I do. So we have some of our adabaduya. And I got my spoon right here because I'm gonna taste it after I season it to make sure that it's where I want it to be. And if, if you're not tasting your food before you feed it to other people, I'm gonna make that suggestion right here, right now. Don't feed somebody something until you taste it, okay? Tip number one. Okay, so now we wanna incorporate the seasoning. And I am going to add a little bit of butter because I want my rice to be rich and moist. We haven't got to the dirty part yet. It's gonna get dirty in here in a minute. So a little bit of butter. That's probably about a tablespoon there. And here is the hack. If you don't use chicken livers. Chicken livers, if you chop them up and you add it, it'll make it dirty. But I have this browning sauce here and I'm gonna just drizzle a little at a time. A little goes a long way. So again, all the measurements are gonna be in the recipe down in the description box. But you don't wanna pour it all at one time because you don't want it to be like dirty, dirty. You just want it to be dirty enough. And you see it is turning. And the, the browning seasoning or the browning sauce, um, it has a teeny bit of flavor. It's not gonna change really the flavor of your dish. It just changes the color a little bit. So you can use that for a soup. If you wanna uh, change the color of your soup or sauces. So that is my little trick. That is my little trick for today. That is my tip. Okay, I think we have all the rice. You wanna make sure all the white rice has, has been incorporated with the browning and the seasoning. Now I get to taste it and see if I need to adjust any flavors. Just a little bit more adabba, do you? I think the spice is perfect though. The heat, just a little bit. Oh yeah, that spice on the back end with that cayenne. There it is. We got dirty rice, easy, simple. There it is, your dirty rice. Let's put it with the salmon and the spicy Creole sauce and we have a fabulous meal. Here it all is. Doesn't it look amazing? Let's put it together and see what it tastes like. So I'm going to put my dirty rice on the bottom. I wish y'all could smell this. I'm doing the food dance. 
because it smells so good and I know it's gonna taste amazing. And when you make it at home, I know it's gonna taste amazing too. So there we go. Let's see, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think this one looks amazing. There we go. And I'm gonna sit it on top like that. And the recipe for this spicy Creole sauce is easy too. It's down in the description box. It's just uh, tomatoes, bell pepper, onions, a little bit of wine, some flour, butter. It's all down there, easy. Ooh, that sauce, that drip, I think it needs its own like theme song. And then of course, we gotta finish it up with a little bit of garnish, microgreens. And remember I told you, you can get this probably at um, a little specialty store, Whole Foods, something like that. There we go. We'll clean up the sides a little bit. We have our blackened salmon with dirty rice and spicy Creole sauce. It's time to taste it. I didn't know which drawer the fork was in, but I got it now. Okay. <sighs> Mouth-watering, deliciousness. Ooh, it's hot too. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the best little bite here, a bite of everything, the sauce and the rice. There we go. Use two fingers, Jolie. It's okay, you at home. Mm-hmm, that's what we were going for. We did it. We understood the assignment. Now, sip a little bit of our pear vodka spritzer to wash it down. That's perfect. The perfect meal for any weeknight or the weekend, y'all. All you need to do is subscribe and turn on your notifications because you'll always know when I'm cooking up something delicious. And remember to comment, like, and share because sharing is caring. Thank y'all for being here with me at home with Chef Jolie. And I'll see you next time.